Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday and welcome on into your For Right Waves Now community spotlight. I'm Kaylee Nix and it's Friday, so we get to chat with Mary O'Connell all about the coolest community in freight running on ice. And Mary, as always, it's a great Friday to be here. We've got another great episode on the way today talking all things alternative energy, and I'm excited to get into this one. I'm excited for this one too. It kind of continues our trend that we've had lately of not necessarily focusing on the cold chain itself and like different ways to kind of manage it and move things across the country, but it really focuses on, you know, that power behind the cold chain. And so uh, today we get the pleasure of talking to someone that's a familiar face to the Freightways Network, um, Robert Kelsch, the CEO and co-founder of AEM Green. And for anyone who saw our Net Zero Carbon Summit, he was uh, one of our fire side chats there and we kind of get into um solar powered uh tru's which is you know the reefer units um we get into kind of the switch to solar there and some of the benefits that come with it um compared to our good old reliable diesel so when we're talking about switching those tru's to solar power for someone who's not like intensely ingrained in that development and deployment it seems almost like a no-brainer right you've got most of those refrigeration units that sit on the front side of a trailer they have a very pretty wide exposed surface area that's open to the sun the majority of the time it makes a lot of sense that they are kind of ripe for the pickings to set up a good solar panel placement and let it do what it does, right? Absorb the energy and use that energy to run your reefer unit. Why are we just starting to see this come onto the scene or start to gain popularity? Or I guess kind of what are some of the hurdles that have stopped this from being so widely deployed? I mean, honestly, it's well, the same reason that we see a lot of hesitancy around electric trucks and um, alternative fuel trucks. And that is, you know, it's the unknown people are always pretty kind of hesitant to jump into the unknown, um, especially, you know, if it's a reefer unit, they don't want to just say, oh, let's try this new solution and then send a truck on the road for 300 miles, um, hoping that the solar power works. So um, it's really kind of been a labor of love for them. They started really small, got some pilot programs for just regional work, and then kind of has scaled it up from there. And honestly, the thing that has really helped propel this forward is a lot of those clean air, clean energy bills that are coming through, um, primarily, as we all know, California is leading the charge there. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of those um, switches to carbon neutrality or improving carbon emissions because um, a lot of these units they've designed, they don't have to they've taken a lot of that human error out of it. So for example, if you have um, if you have an electric pallet jack that you have to charge every night and someone leaves it off the charger, suddenly the next day, you're gonna struggle to get through an entire shift with that pallet jack or that forklift because it was not charged the day before. Um, they have kind of taken that and that same thing can happen with a reefer unit that is battery powered or run, runs on electric is if it doesn't end up getting charged then you can't really run your reefer unit um, so they have actually made it like completely wireless charging it just kind of like slides into the spot and automatically starts charging which as we all know is absolutely fantastic because it removes that human element of mistakes and um not that not that you know we can blame humans for anything but we are a little mistake prone um so it really has kind of taken a lot of things into consideration to kind of design around it if you will to make sure that things are still running with a strong quality uh, I agree. I do forget to plug things in to charge them quite frequently and take my watch that is dead like 99% of the time, right? But I think this is a, this brings up a lot of really good questions and a lot of really good points. I'll start off with the one that you brought up about cost and the fact that a lot of these programs and some of this wider ado adoption is starting to be supported by funding grants. Because so we know that it is costly to get in on this technology on the front side. And when you're talking about doing something that has the control of temperature sensitive freight, that's a lot of risk, right? You have a pretty big margin of or a pretty small margin of error with a really big consequence if you end up messing it up. So that can help drive a little hesitancy as well. From the cost perspective, is it more of those upfront costs, the cost to actually purchase the technology, install it and work it versus the cost of the risk associated with using this type of new technology that's holding people back? 
So the risk is always going to be there, um, but they have actually found that it is the same cost uh, overall to your balance sheet uh, as running a diesel unit or as running like a diesel fleet. Um, so it's been fantastic because as we all know, if you get stuck in traffic, if you're a driver, you get stuck in a traffic jam for an hour, two hours, you know, one of those really nice ones where it kind of shuts down the highway for a little bit. Um, you know, as you run into that, you start to see, um, you start to see, oh, is my reefer unit going to last on the amount of diesel that I have? Um, and a whole bunch of other kind of issues like that, where you start getting a little worried that maybe if you were already running kind of low, well, now there's some kind of range anxiety, if you will, with that diesel unit. Um, and that's less of a concern with a solar powered unit um, because they do have that battery backup, but they also are powered obviously by solar. Um, and contrary to popular belief, it does not need to be a bright sunny day for the solar panels to capture energy. Um, so from a cost perspective, it's really been kind of even. Um, it just helps a lot more in other areas. Um, they've even seen, you know, warehouses that have implemented this or fleets that have done this, um, their workers have been a lot more excited um, because they're not sitting there. It's not smelling like diesel. They're not breathing in fumes. It's quieter in the warehouse where they work. Um, and they've seen a lot more positive change there as well. And again, I think that it's super fascinating to talk about this in terms of sustainability because, because, if I can speak, it is another pretty small step that you can take forward that could relatively have a pretty big impact, especially if you're talking about maybe you own a trailer fleet that has 30 reefer units in it, right? But that is still 30 refrigeration units that you could transition to a cleaner source of energy and helps take some of those emissions out of the space. Mary, for the episode coming up today, where can people go to find it? And then where can they go to subscribe to the newsletter? as well, which also contains some really lovely nuggets of information. You can subscribe to the newsletter on freightwaves.com slash running on ice. And you can find running on ice, the podcast, anywhere you get podcasts like Apple podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. If you're more into the visual format today at 2 p.m. Eastern. There we go. And we are also about a month and a half away mm -hmm. from F3, the future freight festival. That special is still running inside our community's newsletters. No pun intended. Yes. Where can people go to find that one? Uh, if you want, you have to subscribe to Running on Ice to get the access to that special promo code that I think gets you the cheapest tickets that are on offer right now. So I highly recommend it. And if that's not enticing enough, um, there's a great party happening in Chattanooga and I'll be there to celebrate all of the exciting ha things happening in freight this year. There we go. We can't wait to see you here in town. We can't wait to see all of you guys either. So go get those tickets before it's too late. Mary, thanks for joining us this morning. Have a great Friday, a great weekend, and we will catch up with you next week. Bye, guys.